All right, well, we're back for the spoiler discussion of Everest. And if you watched our review, we liked the movie quite a bit. We recommended it to, uh, so to see it in IMAX. Um, there was one particular shot that just kind of blew me away, which was when uh, Josh Brolin's going across the ladder mm. and from below. The thing, yeah, there's a oh, shot yeah, from below. Cuts, yeah, and then you're really like, like, whoa. <laughs> uh, how did they do that? Um, that's kind of an amazing... Well, that, that's something I didn't mention before, was that the CG was really amazing. Yeah, so really amazing, was. you don't think of it as CG. Yeah. But if you think those actors weren't really up there, you know, there's a lot of CG in this movie, but it's very naturally done. Yeah, I had, every once in a while when it would cut back to, like, um, Jason Clark and various other people like on that ledge mm -hmm. every once in a while that would th that would throw it for me and i'd be right. like that's the a practical set. stuff yeah that's a set yeah like they're they're sitting on a set yeah but yeah for the most part you know it looks real the distance shots were just um, gorgeous they also did a really good job of you know you're talking about how the ascent was really tense and all of that they did a good job of giving you information about you know, what each leg of this is like and mm -hmm. how hard this really is. And mm -hmm. you feel like you're going through that with them. Yeah. Um, you know, the fact that they do a bunch of work just to get Anywhere acclimatized. Close. Well, they do a bunch of work just to get acclimatized where they just kind of go up and come back down and yeah. go up and come back down. Yeah. And then they sort of make their way up and get to camp one and camp two and all the different things that get in the way of all of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I mentioned that there's a big cast and they do a lot they do a good job of establishing characters before they get covered up and you can't tell who's who and all that kind of stuff um it's important they had a big cast though for this movie because if they didn't it would be really easy to figure out who makes it who doesn't make it who's strong enough who's not strong enough like they were telling you pretty early on in the movie that john hawks was going to not make it in some way. Something was going to go wrong with him. Uh -huh. like, which, which one? Doug. The okay, guy that Doug, died. Doug, gotcha. I didn't recognize the name. Like, that was pretty obvious that that he was going to go. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal, they made it pretty obvious that he was going to do something stupid and get himself killed because he was being crazy. But he's not a huge part of the movie. And so having... Having those extra characters in there makes it harder to guess what's going to happen when, mm -hmm. um, and and whether someone's going to do something that's actually um, malicious or like the guys that just sort of left Josh Brolin and the Japanese woman mm -hmm. alone, like. That's not necessarily a malicious thing, but it's also, uh, you know, like we didn't help matters, yeah, sort of thing. So, yeah, I I thought it was, I thought it was really well done. I liked that there were as many people in it as there were. Um, I actually, I honestly didn't expect Jason Clark to be quite as big of a role in the movie as he was. Um, like I got that he was the leader and everything. But the trailer really pimps the fact that Jake Gyllenhaal and Josh Brolin are in it. None right. of that's probably to sell tickets. But uh, like you said, Jake Gyllenhaal wasn't that big a part of the movie. No, he's not. Um, you know, and and John Hawks is probably as big a part of the movie as he is. Um, so it it has this, you know, and then it's got Robin Wright and Keira Knightley and. Uh, Emily Mortimer, I think, um, yeah, is the woman at the base camp. I mean, they're all kind of in small roles, but it's it's another thing where, like, Necessary like I said, the, yeah, that ens that ensemble that they set up at the beginning of the film, you know who all those people are mm -hmm. by the time it it really gets rolling. By yeah. the time things they are did happening. a pretty efficient, considering there's so many people, they did a pretty efficient yeah. job of letting us in on who's who and what's one of exactly. The, when I when I was saying that, there was one team of climbers that kept popping up throughout the movie, but they were never on screen really long enough to matter. But they wore the same thing as Doug. And so you'd see one of them off by themselves, and you'd be like, oh, well, there's Doug. Oh, it's not Doug. Or mm. there's those other climbers. No, that's Doug. 
that that's what got confusing because they weren't important they were the ones that stormed off during that meeting at the beginning right um one of the things I thought the movie just did a fantastic job of, and and it also is a good reason to have that many characters, is the mountain is so massive, and that's one of the reasons you need to see it on IMAX, the mountain is so massive, even with that huge cast of characters, it was so lonely on that mountain. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not many scenes where there are a bunch of people in frame. Yeah. Well, and they do those, like, flyovers where you see the camp, and the camp is this tiny speck, right. and the whole rest of the yeah. screen is, like, yeah. a twentieth of the peak. You like, know, I, I, one part I really liked of this movie was, it, it did occur to me, I don't know the physics of the situation in mountainous stuff like that, is, yeah, why don't they just send a helicopter up? And it's like, well, we find out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, that's why. Yeah. You know, it's almost impossible to fly in some of those conditions at all. Well, the air is not thick enough. And that's even it. when it's good weather, you know? Well, and the the whole thing about, like, you know, leaving the bodies on the mountain, mm-hmm. it's just, it's not really practical, and mm-hmm. they're not really hurting anything being up there, yeah. so they're yeah. just up there, you know. Which make me wonder whether there was any in real life at the summit itself. I mean... Any what? Bodies. Well, like, if they find the bodies, they'll bring them back down. Right. It's just, like, his body is under snow and ice and everything else at this point. Like, he's... Like, to recover his body is more... It's not like he's, like, on the path to the summit. Like, somebody's going to stumble over him. He's just off in some corner somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be a huge risk to people to just go up there for that recovery. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. You can't get aircraft up there. You know, it would just be people recovering, and mm-hmm. it's not worth risking someone's life just to bring a dead body back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing, so. Huh. It, it cool did spectacle did such a good job of, of building tension. Like, it, I was just the entire time my yeah. heart was just yeah, racing it, it's kind of a nail biter I also did think Jason Clark was going to survive somehow um, and then when they just reveal that he didn't it's just completely heartbreaking it really was <laughs> you know I, I, mm-hmm. I knew this was a true story but I purposefully didn't look it up Yeah, so either. I could be surprised by yeah. the movie I kind of remember this like as a news item I kind of remember how, like, they made a big deal out of how these businesses taking people up Everest were a terrible idea, and, you know, they were taking too many risks, and there Mm -hmm. were too many people on the mountain, and Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I remember that sort of coming from this, and... Mm. I think it's still going on, too. Like, not on this massive a scale, but it's still going on. Oh, it's... If anything, it's gotten bigger. Yeah. There's there's tons of people doing it. I know there's one that, like, you can hire a Sherpa to carry you up Everest, <laughs> which is, like, the most bougie thing that you could do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh... The, the film itself is more about just what happened, but it kind of raises in the background, uh... There was a camp discussion they had that you know was like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And uh, you got to look at it from the point of view of uh, you know, especially the climbers that have families. It's like, why would you risk that? Not just for yourself and yeah. your own ambition, but it, I think there is a self-inflicted kind of selfishness about a lot of it. Because by the end of the movie, I was like, wow, what what they've been through. And then I re- realized, like, yeah, and it's all self-inflicted. Like, right. nobody made them do this. And it's right. almost like, it, so it's hard to feel sorry for them, but also it, it's 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 easy to go through, like, sympathizing with, wow, that's really a lot to go well, through, and, and like, yet you chose all of it. Right, it's like the woman that did six, and she was trying to get the seventh, the seventh one, yeah. seventh of seven. Yeah. And you're like... The seven summits. Like, in the back of my head, like, somewhere, there, I, I'm just thinking to myself, why don't I just say you did seven? <laughs> right. Who, who's gonna know? Yeah. Like, like you who's know, Josh Brolin, whoever he played, is probably like, yeah, I made the summit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. With his fake nose. With yeah. his fake nose. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yikes. 
Well, that's Avarice. If you like the way we do these, please like the video, subscribe, check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com. Thanks for watching.